Hello, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming to my talk. Uh, my talk is a philosophical talk. I will talk about, uh, about seasteading. Uh, first, I will give, my, give a small introduction about myself. My name is uh, Shai Lin. Um, my parents are from Cambodia. Um, they fled the Civil War there. Um, the Civil War was from 1965 to 1975. Then the Khmer Rouge came into power. Um, and four years later, the Vietnamese invaded Cambodia. So my, then my parents fled to Thailand. Um, I was born in a refugee camp uh, on the border of Cambodia, Thailand. Um, so on the picture, you can see me standing there. I'm the one uh, barefooted. We moved, to the, we moved to the Netherlands in 1991. I've been very much influenced by, um, by philosophers or philosophies that emphasize uh, the individual and how important, how important the individual is. Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, I, I find him very inspiring. Um, but also the philosophers Zhuang Tse and Lao Tse. Lao Tse is the founder of Taoism and Zhuang Tse is the disciple of, uh, of, uh, of Lao Tse. Taoism says that um, if the leader or the ruler um, stops thinking about the common good, then the good will become as common as grass. So the best way for the government to rule a country is actually not rule at all. The, the ideal person in Taoism is the Sun Run. Sun Run is the true man. He detaches himself from the mob and he tries to, um, he tries to develop his own values. Nietzsche, he had something similar as the Sun Run, which is the Ubermensch. The Ubermensch says you should overcome all the values that society has, has given you. Instead, you have to create your own values. And the other uh, big inspiration is a famous political philosopher among uh, libertarian anarchists. He is uh, Murray Rothbard. I've been trying to convince a lot of, uh, a lot of people you know, to come to the other side, to come to libertarian anarchism. But most of the discussions turn out to be a big annoyance. It's really annoying to try to convince people politically. They always tell me, no, I'm wrong. I'm telling them, no, no, you're wrong. You should, you should view politics in this way. And then in 2012, I, had, I have this new mantra. Um, well, the masses have given up on unregulated capitalism. So those who support unregulated capitalism should give up on the masses. Instead, I've been focusing on something much more, much more positive. Um, I'd like to think about new technologies like Bitcoin. Bitcoin decentralizes uh, money production. It gives power to the individual, um, it, and it separates state and money. I also like renew renewable energy, because renew renewable energy decentralizes energy production. And I hope that in the future, every individual can create his own energy. And another thing that I like to think about is seasteading, uh, creating micro nations on the oceans, and by creating these micro-nations, we are decentralizing governmental systems. That is what my talk is about. My main thesis is actually quite simple. Um, the first thing that I would like to argue for is that political philosophy is to an important degree focused in the idea of political disagreement. Uh, well, everyone has his own values. Everyone has his own view of how society should look like. So we are living in a pluralistic society. And then the question that I would like to ask is, we are living in a, in a democracy. Does democracy deal well with this reality or not? I believe it deals very poorly with this reality. So we should look for political possibilities beyond democracies. And one way to do so is by creating uh, an open experimentation space where people are allowed to, well, to experiment with new forms of social organizations. Uh, so that we can introduce competition into the industry of governments. One way to do so is through seasteading. Mm. Well, uh, Bernard Williams is a, is a philosopher, and he made a very, I think, a very important uh, observation. He said that political philosophy is to an important degree focused in the idea of political disagreement. I totally agree with his view. A lot of philosophy is very much focused in the ideal. It, becomes, it, it has become quite detached from... Uh, from reality sometimes. Um, that is something I don't really like very much because I believe that philosophy should enrich people's lives. John Rawls, he's another philosopher, he says that um, political philosophy should provide an underlying basis uh, of philosophical and moral agreement. And through this 
um, through this agreement, we can build a society that the people who live in there are happy and agree that the social structure is as it is. Uh, the second role of uh, political philosophy is that it, it has the role of orientation. Political philosophy should help us think about the possibilities in politics. Uh, and by, reflecting on, by helping us reflect on society, it can help us orientate uh, through the political space. And the third thing is that political philosophy should be realistically utopian. It should prescribe a, a utopian ideal, but one which, is, one which you can achieve. We are living in a, uh, in a representative democracy. The idea of, the, of a democracy is that the agent will act in the interest of all the people. But I believe that this is impossible. Take, take for example, the, the following example. There is, a, there is a legislation and 35% is in favor of the, of the uh, legislation and 65% is against the legislation. If the agent pushes through this legislation, then he will represent 35% and not represent the 65%. So it is not that it is difficult to represent the constituency, it is rather that it is impossible. Also believe that democracy is fundamentally coercive and, and violent. It divides people along their comprehensive doctrines, uh, along the views. And if we look uh, more closer to the nature of governments, we can see that a government is nothing but a monopoly on jurisdiction and coercion within a particular society, a particular territory. Because they are monopolies, they're also very reluctant uh, or very resistant to disruptive political changes. You, see, you can try to change the political system with voting, but our vote carries so little weight. What else can we do? We can try to live in another country, but it's so difficult to live in another country. You have to uh, you have to be accepted by, by the host country. You have to leave, maybe leave your home, leave your family. What we, what we can also do is try to start a political revolution. But revolution is, revolutions are very costly. We can try to do so with violence. Well, my parents have witnessed uh, yeah, what happened in Cambodia. So that is something that I don't think is, very, is, this is a good idea. And because your, your, your vote carries so little weight, you, don't, you are not, not incentivized uh, to learn about politics. So people are very uninformed about politics. Um, what you see here is uh, Robert Nozick. And he wrote a very beautiful piece about uh, how, we should look, uh, how we should look at the uh, political system. And we can look at it from a, meta uh, from a meta system level perspective. He says, utopia will consist of utopias, of many different and divergent communities in which people lead different kinds of lives under different institutions. Some kinds of communities will be more attractive to most than others. Communities will wax and wane. People will leave some for others or spend their whole lives in one. Utopia is a framework for utopias, a place where people are at liberty to join together voluntarily to pursue and attempt to realize their own vision of the good life in the ideal community, but where no one can impose his own utopian vision upon others. Utopia is meta-utopia, the environment in which utopian experiments may be tried out, the environment in which people are free to do their own thing, the environment which must, to a great extent, be realized first, if more, if more particular utopian visions are to be realized stably. So what he sketches there um, is, is very similar to what Chandran uh, Kundras is saying. Um, he says that the principles of a free society describe an archipelago of competing and overlapping jurisdictions. Societies should be structured according to norms of mutu mutual tolerance or civility, under which people accept that different groups or communities live by different moral beliefs, but also recognize that no group has the right to compel anyone to become or to remain a member. So what this man pres prescribes is, uh, is a vision in which there are hundreds of countries where people are free to move from, uh, from one country to the other. Um, by doing so, societies will wax and wane. Those societies that are restricting human flourishing, will, they will die off. And those societies that 
uh, that are very good for, for, for the people who live there, they will grow and become stronger and bigger. But creating such an, yeah, such an experimentation space in which we can experiment with new forms of social organization, um, I think requires four attitudes. Um, first of all, it requires sociological imagination. I think what, what is lacking at this moment in our society is the imagination that there are possibly better societies than democracies. We have democracies for how many years? 150, 200 years? Um, yeah, if you count in uh, ancient Greece, maybe 2,500 years. But to say that democracy is the best form of, form of uh, government is very narrow-minded. Another attitude um, is that we should have some kind of yeah, epistemological modesty. So like Socrates, we should, uh, we should know that we know very little. Or what Socrates says is that, um, I am the wisest man alive, for I know one thing, and it's that I know nothing. Because imagine if people are really allowed to, to experiment with their own forms of social organization. I cannot predict what forms of social organizations will exist. But one thing I can be sure of, and that is that there will be a large, large variety of... Um, we should also realize that order can emerge spontaneously. We don't always need a master who will build society from the top to bottom. And I think we should also realize that a utopian dream of one single perfect society is impossible. Do not argue, argue too much with each other about what is the, perf what is the perfect society. I think. So one way to create uh, an open experimentation space is through seasteading. Well, many writers have, have fantasized about creating their own societies. And then there is a video game, it's called Bioshock. In the video game, you have a character whose name is Andrew Ryan. And Andrew Ryan, he was so upset with, so, with society that he decided to build his own society uh, in, uh, within the oceans. And now I'm introducing you to Andrew Ryan. He said, I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? No, says the man in Washington, it belongs to the poor. No, says the man in the Vatican, it belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow, it belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. A city where the artist would not fear the censor, where the scientist would not be bound by petty morality, where the great would not be constrained by the small. And with the sweat of your brow, rapture can become your city as well. And Andrew Ryan is actually a, a seasteader. He's a seasteader because he created a ha habitable place on the oceans. One of the most important things to change in society is legislature. We can, for example, look at uh, North and South Korea. Both are Koreans, more or less the same natural resources. But only because they have different political systems, we can see that South Korea uh, is much richer. The GDP per capita is 18 times larger. The internet penetration is 850 times greater, life expectancy rate 10, 10 years longer, and even uh, preschool boys are four centimeters taller. If we could all seize that and uh, introduce more competition in, in, in the industry of governments, it would lower the cost of switching social organizations. Um, it can also help realize social change and solve social issues. It can also help generate knowledge in areas of, of political philosophy and social sciences through experimentation. And fourthly, it can also help human, humans deal with realities of political disagreements and value pluralism. Okay. And then you can see that people who live in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, 38% of them say that they would like to permanently move to another place. And then 23% in uh, the Middle East and North Africa, 90% in Europe, 18% in America, 10% in Asia. Seasteading can help these people, you know, to, um, to find a better place and build a better life.
what you see here on the picture on the left, that is uh, a habitable uh, dwelling in Rotterdam. So we already more or less have the, have the technology to create uh, habitable dwellings on, on water. It's not on that large scale yet that we can call it a society. But I believe that when our technology improves, uh, we will be, be eventually a, uh, able to create societies on the oceans. And maybe it's a better step to start colonizing the oceans first before we colonize Mars or other planets. So to wrap up, so the core focus of political philosophy is to deal with realities of value pluralism and political disagreements. Um, representative democracies deal uh, poorly with these realities. So we need to look for new political possibilities. Um, and seasteading um, provides a solution to the monopolistic industry of governments. Um, to think about new possibilities, we need to change our attitudes. We have to cultivate our sociological imagination. Um, seasteading can help provide political agreements. They can help people orient themselves better throughout the political space. And I believe that seasteading is also realistically utopian. It prescribes a utopian meta system, which I believe will also be realizable in the future, as long as uh, technology moves forward. So I would say let's stop arguing, convincing people to our side, instead um, start seasteading or at least broaden their imagination so that they can think about alternatives. <laughs>